Hi friends, how are y'all? Welcome back to the channel for my favorite series that we do over here. I love the series so much, it's just so fun for me. Michelin Possible, where we together go on some sort of fine dining adventure as a home cook to see if it is Michelin Possible or if it's a mission impossible. I'm feeling confident. Exciting. I'm feeling lazy, yeah. Whoa, that was crazy. Did you see that? <gasps> I've done this series in several ways. I've gone to actual Michelin restaurants and tried to deconstruct and recreate something from their menu. I have tried to do seven course Michelin style fine dining meals for friends. Today though, I wanna do something a little bit different and I want to see if I can create a three course fine dining Michelin inspired meal for $25 per person. I'm going to try to make enough food for two people, three courses with a total of a $50 budget. We are literally just gonna to go to the store and get inspired and see what we can do within the budget based off what they have. And I feel like if you're in California, you know, groceries out here are expensive. This is twice as hard of a challenge as opposed to if I was doing this back home in Texas, where I'm from, so the best spot for somewhat affordable groceries is definitely Trader Joe's, but it's also a much more limited, smaller grocery store. But I'm gonna try to do all of this from Trader Joe's. Rules for today are basic things like oil, salt, pepper, flour, just pantry staples. Don't count if I already have them in my kitchen and if they're not a specialty thing, I can use it. Otherwise, everything else has to be bought today under the $50 range for three courses for two people, $25 per person. Let's see if this is even possible. I'm sure it is, but I just wanna do something really nice and fancy. We're running out of time. Let's go. Let's go to the store and let's see what we can come up with in terms of the menu. Just pulled up to Trader Joe's and a couple thoughts. I feel like doing three savory courses might be the way to go because then I won't have to buy a ton of like baked good related things. Also produce and grains are by far the cheapest. I feel like animal products are more expensive. So maybe doing two vegetable focused dishes. One thing that is perceived as super fine dining but is actually not that expensive in terms of ingredients is risotto. So perhaps doing some sort of risotto could be an option. Maybe like a vegetable focused dish, a grain focused dish like a risotto, and then one meat focused dish could be a way to get the price point down per course. These are just my preliminary thoughts, but let's go see if they have any fun out of the norm produce because I also feel like seasonal out of the norm produce are things that you don't normally get at regular restaurants, but that you get at like nicer restaurants that kind of source locally and source seasonally. So that could also be a way to elevate the dishes a bit too. So dear Mr. Trader Joe's, please have some good things in stock for me today. <laughs> Okay, brainstorming for the risotto. These are fun. These oyster mushrooms are $3. And then microgreens, these are $2.99. These always elevate a dish. Got some onion. Um, I might just get some herbs, some cheap cooking white wine. And I have butter and broth already at home, which I feel like are pantry staples. Plum cots are interesting, $3.69. I wonder if I could utilize these in some sort of like elevated salad dish. I'm gonna walk around and see what could potentially go with that because that is something a little bit out of the norm and maybe fun. Okay, a plan is starting to take place. I found this pork tenderloin for $7.99. I've actually never made pork tenderloin. Peppercorn garlic, which might be a little weird, but I thought fennel seemed like a fun ingredient to maybe go with it. Also, I love gooseberries because they're like super acidic, kind of like a tomato meets a cherry in a sense. I don't know if those things would go well together or not, but maybe like over a polenta would be nice. And then for the um, plum cots, I thought grilling them and maybe doing like an endive salad, I would want some sort of like, I'm dividing these by course so I can think, but some sort of like creamy base. So maybe like a ricotta or a mascarpone or something to plate this on top of because this is super bitter. This will be sweet and grilled and charred. So something like creamy to balance that might be nice. Polenta, $1.99. Incredible, that's gonna help really save the budget. And I feel like pork is kind of an elevated thing and would go well with pork. Oh yeah, I also ended up adding pancetta. It's a bit more of an expensive ingredient. I think it was $4.99 to this dish because I feel like that will also really elevate it. So like a couple little fancy things per dish 
which will be nice. I, this was the cheapest Parmesan I could find. It was $5. The more that I'm assessing this dish, I just kind of feel like as much as I want to use fennel, the flavor won't really make sense. I feel like I should swap this out and do some sort of braised green, like a Swiss chard or a collard green or something. And then maybe I can add more color by doing part gooseberry, part tomato. I'm gonna see if that fits into the budget. Okay, my total is $49.53 for switching this to, we'll do like a braised kale. And then I thought that these mini heirloom tomatoes, all the different color variations looked pretty elevated and mix that in with the gooseberry and kind of lay that together with the pork. Should bring some nice acidity to the creamy polenta. And then I can reuse this Parmesan in both the polenta and the risotto. But I won't do too much polenta so that it doesn't feel too grain heavy as a whole. Okay, meetings are done. I'm home for the day. My goal, it's almost 3 p.m. My goal is to have dinner ready by six. Three courses, three hours, nothing that requires too much prep. All of it's pretty easy. I'm feeling like it's possible. I'm feeling like it's possible. So our final menu is going to be first course, a grilled plum cot and endive salad. Second course, we're going to do our risotto. And then third course, we're going to try to do our pork tenderloin on top of a uh, polenta. I think first things first, we try grilling these plum cots. The thing is, visually, I'd love to do these in half. For the practicality of eating it, I don't know if quarters is actually better, but if I serve with a steak knife, I feel like half is not bad. <gasps> Look at that color. Just see how ripe they are, how sweet they are. Mmm. I feel like the grilling them will make them sweeter because the char, the caramelization, the Maillard reaction kind of heightens up sweetness. I think this will work nicely with everything else we have planned. Do some smoked salt because that feels elevated but i could also finish this with salt too that might make more sense actually but too late i've committed we're ready so in an effort to not waste i'm thinking the pancetta which is gonna go on the first course. I'm gonna go ahead and saute it up. Man, I can't do anything without my nails. We all know how delicious any sort of fat is, bacon fat, pancetta fat. So I'm kind of thinking if I save the fat, I can use that in the risotto for the second course. It smells honestly pretty delicious. This and the um, grilled fruit are the only warm elements to the dish. I don't think I'm gonna serve them warm. I think I'm gonna serve it all just like a salad, you know? Um, because over the mascarpone that will be cold. I'm gonna get this all sauteed up and the fat set aside for our risotto. Okay, let's play with this mascarpone for our first dish. I'm gonna see if I can loosen this up with some lemon juice, but I also wanna make it super balanced, so I might go ahead and add some honey to it too. Lemon from the tree, a little bit of lemon juice, definitely some salt. I think I'm gonna loosen it with a little bit of water too. That added some good life to it actually. It's just such a just plain cream tasting. Just a teeny tiny little baby head of honey. That's getting there. I kind of want a little bit more lemon and honey, but we're, we're getting there and then we're gonna plate all this up. There's our first course. I'm actually wondering if it would look a little more elevated to just do the little leaves on one side. Do you like that more? I might actually like that more. <gasps> okay.
Would you like to know what you have here? Yes, tell me. Okay, this is a grilled plum cot salad, I guess we could call it. And it's over a honey and lemon mascarpone with pancetta, microgreens, endive, um, slivered almonds. So how much how much all in for this for the salad? I actually calculated it. It's about nine dollars, but I mean eleven dollars, but we could probably get four servings out of it. Maybe more. So per serving, I'd bet two to three dollars per serving. Mmm. Wow. Mm. The I thought plum that, mm. reads like a meat almost. Oh, you're kind of right. In a great way. First Happy break. first course, baby. I really got it. Great job. Thank I love you. you. Love you. Mm -hmm. Let's go forage some free ingredients for our risotto dish. First, I feel like some lemon zest will brighten it a bit, and there's so many lemons on my tree right now. One handed lemon picking. Ah. Okay. My mother-in-law was recently in town and taught me that these are edible. They're called, I'm gonna say them wrong, I'm so sorry, nasturtiums. They're these beautifully bright orange flower and they're like a little bit peppery. And I don't know if I want to use these whole on our dish or maybe just pull off some petals individually, might be better scale. But I'm just gonna grab a few of these. I think what I'm gonna do is first start with some onion, some garlic, get that sauteed. And you know what I'm thinking about the oyster mushrooms? I think it's just too risky to try to grill them or saute them whole since they're so thick. So I actually think I'm just going to dice them or slice them and get those sauteed in with the onion and the garlic and just have it folded in. I'm gonna scrape in the rest of our pancetta fat. Get all that sauteed down. This might be a lot of onion for this ratio, but I'm gonna start toasting my rice now. And I expect this to take about 30, 40 minutes, but I also totally forgot we got these microgreens that will be pretty on, on this dish as well, along with the nasturtiums, nasturtiums, listerine. And I'll just make it a risotto without too much on top, except for our forage, little flower petals, maybe some nice olive oil, some flaky sea salt, something a little bit visual, but I don't think I need a star of the show since it's not the main course. Okay, the risotto is almost there. It's a little al dente and I'm gonna leave it so that I can warm it back up and finish cooking. But this is how you tell when you draw a spoon through and it slowly comes back together. That's when you know the consistency is right. So since I'm prepping this ahead of time, I'm gonna leave this like this and then I'll heat it one more time, maybe with a little more broth before serving up. Starting with a generous scoop of risotto, some fresh pepper, some flaky salt, some lemon zest, some microgreens, some olive oil, and then let's see how we can use these. Okay, second course. This is a oyster mushroom risotto oh. with lemon and foraged flowers from my yard, lemon zest, microgreens, white wine, garlic, onion. Pretty simple, actually. This looks delicious. Thanks. Mmm. That's really good. If it's buttery and salty, <clears throat> hard that's to, a win. Hard to dislike buttery and mm -hmm. salty. Buttery, flippery, flushed. Huh? Mm -hmm. Baked on a buttery, uh, crispy crust. Damn. Flaky! I thought I said flaky. Okay. <laughs> okay, for the main event, the final course, I feel like one thing that I can prep ahead of time is this tomato and gooseberry <laughs> saute. Um, I hope I don't hate this together, but when you cut a gooseberry open, the inside and a tomato, they don't look super different, which is why I feel like they'll kind of be fun to play with each other. So you'll get a mix of like these two things together. I wanna try a bite with both raw. Mm. It's super bright and acidic. The gooseberry has a little bit of like kind of a floral taste to it. And I feel like that will help balance just the overall just creaminess, fattiness, 
I don't want to say bland, but kind of, of the polenta. This knife is so dull. I need to sharpen this. So I'm going to probably saute about half of this up so that we can taste it and see how we feel about them being served warm. But I feel like this is something that I can prep now and then just right before I plate, just quickly heat back up one more time. This pan also has some crispy pancetta bits left. I decided not to wash it out because if I do that, then the pancetta is a little bit present in all three dishes, which kind of helps make it a little cohesive. This is one little tomato and one little gooseberry. Mmm. I actually like the sweetness. I don't think it needs warm. Great. That's just been warmed through. And I'm going to set these aside and heat these up one more time right before we plate. Now I'm gonna start working on the braised kale. I have to decide if I wanna boil the kale first to make it extra soft, or if I just wanna basically saute it with some liquid and have it be a little more like toothy. I don't know, I think I should save all of my stock for the risotto. And I don't really have any other liquids. I could boil it in water. I found a second stock in the back of my pantry. Broth, pardon. I think I am going to start by just and using as much flavor as possible into this kale. Don't need a ton. I'll let this come up to a simmer. Actually, I guess I'm using this whole thing. <laughs> I might just do thin little slices because I want that to be still kind of visible once it's sauteed down instead of being diced. As you can see, we are simmering away. Just gonna plop in a bit of kale. Let that soften, get that flavor in there. I honestly don't know how much this might reduce and wilt. This is definitely giving Southern comfort food for sure. You ready for a sizzle? feel like this dish is like so southern comfort that it's going to be hard to make it feel elevated fine dining with all of the ingredients and just what it is so I'm gonna to have to be really intentional with the plating to try to to try to make this feel a little more Michelin this is definitely the most casual meal I've done for this series so far but I think we could still make it feel a little special and a little fancy with some intentionality there's a restaurant I love in Pasadena called Bone Kettle and they do this bok choy which is basically like in a butter broth. It's kind of what I'm trying to go for here. It's probably gonna be really hot. Honestly, it's pretty similar. Okay, gonna set this aside. Oh, and a package is coming. Awesome. The heat's not on yet. I'm just gonna try to loosen this up a little. Whoa, that was crazy. Did you see that? That was fun, I'm having fun. I feel like this is the cheater, non fine dining way to make polenta, but this is the only type of polenta that Trader Joe's has. <laughs> and it's seasonal, so you can't even get it most of the time. And add some butter. You already know. And let that get all melty. I'm going to add the slightest splash of this wine also to this polenta after it's pretty much already cooked, like maybe like half a tablespoon, just to add a little bit more brightness and acidity to this. Um, when you don't cook wine, it stays super like, of course the alcohol is not cooked out, but then when you do cook it, it gets a little bit sweeter. So that's why I'm gonna try just, just a smidge. That like lightened it and brightened it a smidge. So I like that. For our pork tenderloin, I'm actually realizing I calculated my cost of this wrong because I was looking at the full pound cost, but this is less than a pound, so this was actually only $5.93. I've never made this before, but thankfully for me, it has instructions on the front, the several different ways you could prepare it. I think I'm gonna do this the way where I pan sear it to get a good, good like golden sear, and then I'll set it aside, and when we're on the course before, I'll pop it in the oven for like 20 minutes, what temp, 350. Just need to get to a 
internal temp of 160 for medium. Our um, very kind yard guy came to talk to me and so I panished because I was in the middle of this and we talked for a while. So I turned the heat off and so I'm not proud of my sear. Um, it's, it's a little sad looking. I don't want to overcook it and make it tough either. Dang it, that was kind of bad timing. I'll just pop this in when we're on our second course. With you? Yeah. I'm not excited about this course. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. I feel like I kind of failed. The sear is just bad on the pork, and it's me. not giving elevated. It's just giving southern comfort. But the the fun kind of ingredient I tried to play with is mm -hmm. gooseberries. I thought they'd mm -hmm. play well off tomatoes, yeah. kind of sautéed. If you made like a little pattern with the gooseberries or tomatoes, etc. Ooh, yeah. Been an easy level up, because this looks great. I should have, honestly, I should have used the piping bag for the polenta, mm -hmm. and then I should have done a pattern with the berries. That's great. What are you talking about, dude? All the flavors are amazing. I think if you did less polenta, mm -hmm. and pork in the middle, mm -hmm. greens on the side, mm -hmm. polenta and berries mm. on one side, mm -hmm. And let it assemble yourself, and maybe some sort of sauce from something else. Oh, yeah. The... Who is that? Cheers. <sighs> <laughs> well, this was quite a different episode of Michelin Impossible. Fully winging it, just showing up, seeing what ingredients were there, what fit in my budget, and just and going with it. If I did things differently, I definitely would have plated the pork dish a bit differently. I would have seared it better. I also would have maybe allotted something in the budget to be an unexpected ingredient for the risotto, but it was honestly delicious. I just wish that there was something a little more unexpected within it. I wanna try it again. I wanna see if I can redeem myself and maybe even do a better job next time. But let me know if there's any other Michelin Impossible videos that you wanna see within a certain focus or theme or category. Thanks for clicking on this video. It's a concept that I love to do for me because it really sparks my creativity and it, like I feel it in my soul. I'm just excited to play with these types of things. So thank you for supporting the videos because by doing that, you're supporting me. And we love you. Hope you have the best rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon.